drej. Nej, vi skal lægge for den. Boom. You are live on channel 8 and YouTube. Good evening. The time is 6.30 p.m. I will call the July 1st, 2021 meeting of the Templeton Advisory Committee to order. I will call the roll. Uh, Wilfred Spring. Here. Doug Bartolomeo. Here. April Cover. Here. Matthew Rivard here. Robert May is absent. Um, I will also note that we have some guests in the room with us this evening. Uh, Town Administrator Adam Lamontagne is here. Select Board Member Teresa Griffiths is here. And NRSD School Committee Member Justice Graves is here with us this evening. At this time, I'd ask you all to please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Housekeeping items. This meeting is being held in person at the conference room in Templeton Town Hall in conjunction with a Zoom meeting for remote attendees and being broadcast via Templeton Community Television Channel 8 and the TCTV YouTube channel in accordance with Commonwealth of Massachusetts requirements. Any comments made on the YouTube channel are considered part of the public record for this meeting and will be entered into the meeting agenda into the meeting minutes. The agenda for this meeting was posted to www.templeton.mass.gov. 48 hours in advance of the meeting per Commonwealth of Massachusetts requ requirements for open meeting laws. Please note that while everyone, or while we do have a quorum in the room this evening, um, members are allowed to participate remotely and we are allowed to do business as long as a quorum is present both in the conference room and remotely via the teleconferencing program. We do encourage the public to join us in Templeton Town Hall Conference Room to make their voices heard and would also encourage any for any uh, any legal voting residents of Templeton who wish to join advisory committee to further have their voices heard, we would ask you to please go to the Templeton website, www.templetonma.gov, get the committee interest form, fill it out and return it to, to uh, Holly Young, the, uh, the administrative assistant to the town administrator and the select board um, for appointment and to be sworn in. And uh, yeah, we will have three open positions, so any interest is greatly appreciated at this time. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> as I said, uh, on that note where you said about uh, people coming in, it's now past the 30 day time yep. for the uh, the moderator. Mm -hmm. So uh, we could end up voting that individual, whoever came forth. Okay. It's a quicker process. Okay. On another note, I'd like to take an end up having the uh, committee take a moment of silence for Jack. Dale, an outstanding policeman for this community, longstanding for the community. Somebody that I have known for quite a while. After his retirement, he and I had a lot of conversations and I looked to him for a lot of information uh, about the town and, and uh, looking forward to end up getting information. It could help me help formulate some of my opinions. So if we can have a moment of silence. It's a good man. I'd ask us all to please join a moment of silence for Mr. Jack Dale. Thank you. And may he rest in peace. Thank you. You're welcome. The agenda is posted on the uh, on the Templeton's uh, on the Temple on the town of Templeton's uh, website. Um, you will hear me call off item the numbers on the agenda. You'll be able to follow along along if you take a look at the documents that way. We will now begin item three A of the agenda: approval of the meeting minutes from June seventeenth, two thousand and twenty-one. I'll accept the motion to accept those minutes as presented. So move. I have a motion from Mr. Spring. Do I have a second? Okay. I have a second from Ms. Cover to accept the minutes from April 7th or from June 17th, 2021 as presented. Is there any discussion on said motion? Is there any discussion on said motion? Hearing no discussion on the motion to the membership because everyone is in person in town hall, um, it will be a voice vote. 
Uh, we're not going to do roll call this evening unless there's a question. So all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. The motion passes unanimously at 6.35 p.m. Correspondence. Item 4A, a letter on June 16th, 2021, a resignation by committee member Robert May that is to be effective July 15th, 2021. I will read the letter. Mr. Chairman, I'm writing to inform you that it is my intention to resign from the advisory committee. I will make the effective date July 15th, 2021 to assist with gaining quorum in the case of transfers. I will, of course, be willing to amend this to an earlier date if the position can be filled. I would like to thank the members who recently stepped up to join the committee and the members who have helped me to understand the ins and outs of small town government. I look forward to seeing Templeton's future improvement. My resignation shall be effective no later than, than July 15th, 2021, respectfully, Robert May. I'll entertain a motion to have this accepted into the record and forwarded to the town clerk. Mr. Chairman, if I could. For you a... may. It's with profound and great profound regret that I look to think and end up having this individual resign from this body. He has been an outstanding member, one of the top in all my years that I've been on, one of the top eight to 10 persons who has undiligently spent a lot of time trying to take in the town government work much better for the citizens. He's also a great friend of mine. When he was not on the uh, committee, and I always look to his step to pick and end up getting information and a lot of discussions to, and uh, it was both agreed on that needed to be addressed for this community. So with that, I'll make a motion to accept the resignation and pre present it to the, uh, the town clerk. And I would say that we need to pick and end up making a carbon copy to the moderator so that he's aware. Understood. Um, and uh, and, I'll, and since you're making the motion, then uh, that, I, that will be the motion that is recorded to um, accept, as, accept the letter of resignation forward to the town clerk and to carbon copy um, that to the town moderator. Yes. Mr. Graves. Is there a second? Okay. I have a motion. I have a motion from Mr. Spring and a second from Ms. Bartolomeo to accept the resignation letter of Robert May into the record, forward to the town clerk and CC the moderator. Is there any discussion? I, my heart spoke. Bob has got the most incredible math mind of anybody I ever met. I am hoping, I am hoping with all my heart that he will still Keep his eye on the numbers because that's what he does best. Um, I have a funny feeling that he will. Um, I, I'm not happy about this, but I understand it and I will second the motion. Is there any further discussion on said motion? Well, I think I've said. Enough before the motion. It is unfortunate, and I, I will note that um, my though my dealings with Bob have been few because I've only been here a short amount of time. Um, I greatly valued his comments. I greatly valued his insight. Um, I am saddened myself to be losing a intelligent and thoughtful voice. And uh, it's effective July seventeenth. So I would I, I hope he will reconsider. But um, if he doesn't. We appreciate his uh, we appreciate his time. We appreciate him giving his time to the uh, committee and wish him the best in his future endeavors. Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously at 6.39 p.m. Um, I would also like to note um, before I continue that another, uh, another guest has joined us this evening, Mr. Uh, Jeffrey Bennett. Select board member is also in the room with us this evening. We appreciate him being here and joining us. <laughs> Item 4B, on June 18th, 2021, a resignation letter from Faith Curcio effective, Curcio effective immediately. Um, I am not going to read this one aloud as there is, um, there is comment in here that I do not believe that should be in the record. 
Um, other than to say that it, uh, other than to say it very clearly states in the email that I will not be moving forward on this board, which I take to uh, to mean that she is resigning immediately. Um, therefore, um, I will entertain a motion to accept the resignation as presented. Forward to the town clerk, CC to the to the moderator. So okay. moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion from Mr. Spring and a second from Ms. Bartolomeo to accept into the record as presented. Forward to the town clerk, CC the moderator. Is there any discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. The motion carries at 6.40 p.m. Okay. Item 4C, on June 18th, 2021, a bill notice from Gatehouse, New England. This is uh, from the annual town meeting advertisement in the Gardner News. Um, I will note to the committee that I took a look at this. It is the same bill that we paid on May 27th. It just means that the payment hasn't got, hadn't gotten to the uh, Gardner News by the time I got this. It has been, we have duly paid it. The accountant is taking care of it. So at this time, I am, will entertain a motion to take no action on this item. So moved. I have a motion from Mr. Spring to have a second. I have a second from Ms. Cover to take no action on the bill notice from Gatehouse New England for the annual town meeting advertisement in the Gardner News. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. And the motion carries at 6.41 p.m. Moving to discussion. Item 5A, end of year transfer process. This is an inform for new members. And I'm going to note um, before we begin the discussion by, by Mr. Spring, because he's the person who brought this up, that um, Mr. Lamontagne informed me before the meeting this evening that there will be no end of year transfers this year. Um, the uh, the uh, Everything was taken care of. Um, before the end of the fiscal year, and there was one item that was taken care of by this committee using the emergency reserve fund. So uh, there are no end of year transfers that will have to be dealt with, but this is still an inform for the new members of the committee. And uh, Mr. Spring, I will let you uh, I will let you take over. Okay. Thank you for your for your faith in me for presenting this to the members. Everything that I'm going to be talking about this evening is you a mass general law. Out of the bylaws, out of the Association of Health Finance Handbook from DL DLS, documentation that, that the committee has, notations from the annual town reports, correspondence for, uh, for different things. Uh, and uh, that we have ha we have had presentations to the select board and some notations on on uh, the process af after uh, I, I present what we have as uh, our working documents. Mass General Law 44, Section 33B. I'm just going to note, note the highlights of that. This transfers can occur within the last few months of the fiscal year or during the first 15 days of the new fiscal year to apply the previous fiscal year, the amount appropriate, other than the use of municipal light department, school department, or any other appropriation. For the public's, uh, for the public's information, I would note that today is actually the first day of fiscal year 2022. Fiscal year 2021 closed yesterday. Yeah. That's a little bit different than what it had. We had the modern uh, municipal uh, uh, act that occurred and the uh, amounts of money that we can transfer has changed. I just want to make note of that so that new members know that there was a previous version. What I want to point out on this is out of this, alternately the selectmen with the concurrence I want to pick it up, specifying that concurrence of the finance committee. That doesn't say that we go first. It says we have to concur with them. They're the ones that see it first. And it's during that time. Information guidelines from DSL basically reiterates the same thing. About the and it has to be a majority vote of the select board and the uh, finance committee. 
and these only the last few months in 15. Again, from page 20 uh, of the Association of Town Finance Handbook, it, it talks to this particular item. And I think there was, a, there was a, oh yes. However, this, 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 the, this, uh, uh, this change in 2006, the state allowed the Board of Selectmen with the approval of the Finance Committee. I want to think and end up talking to that so I want, everybody knows that that's the time frame it's, this, this uh, actually took place. We have the request for a transfer between and within accounts that this committee has used since 2006. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 it, if you look at other communities, theirs is probably not a, as elaborate, but this has all the same things. It, it actually says about copies to originator, accountant, and the board for uh, accountability for all of those people. And 2015, the policy on India transfers was was voted by this by this committee. And basically, you know, I want to just point out one thing. It says it says that the transfer has to go to the selection first. But there's a lot of other things about it has to be legal within the, it can't be after the 15th, and it reiterates everything else. And it can be, be in, in, within the department or between departments also. So this has been in effect since 2015. But knowing all of that, I ended up saying, okay, how have we done? Uh, and I tried to, I looked back as far as I could, as far, and the um, town records, the annual reports. And let me just go over what I found. Starting in 2012, there was one in the year report, uh, a transfer request. 13, there was one. 14, none. 15, none. 16, 32. 17, 10. 18, 0. 19, 0. 20, 0. And we have 21. Whoops, we now, no, we will not have any. That doesn't seem like it's a lot of problems to me, except for two years. And I did a little more further research as to what happened those two years. Well, first of all, it was unfortunate that the 16 report, because this committee, and as my fellow committee member, Ms. Battaglia Mayo has stated time and time again, is it's a permanent record that goes into the annual reports. It's our history. Yeah, it's our history. Well, unfortunately, that was cut. It was it was submitted a total of eight pages. I must say that I drafted it. I gave it to the vice chairman at that time because I was going in for surgery. He looked it over, he agreed. And I, I think there was no changes to it per se. It did it did it did go it meet all the requirements of how many transfers. It was a full accounting of this, this, this committee. What was presented was this bottom and this top and the town report. Unfortunately. What we did see, like I said, it was eight pages. There was 32 transfers that this committee had to take an end up doing. In addition, we did emergency reserve transfers besides. So it was quite, it was a quite busy year for us as a committee, unfortunately. That didn't make the record so, I mean, that's lost to everybody. Why do I bring it up? Because I have I have a copy of it. And 
They were supposed to be in addendum. Uh, I don't, I think that it took a place, but it did not give a full re recording uh, of, for the record. Just knowing that, that uh, the next year was uh, 17. There was a total of 10 India's transfers. One of them, one of them was uh, consisted of eight transfers because of the snow and ice. Very unusual year. The other one was for uh, town council. We took money for, for town council. In both 16 and 17, this committee basically pushed back on the, the budget. So it is more a budget issue than a transfer issue of the amount of transfers. As you saw, there was basically, we have basically not too many transfers during the year if we do good budgeting. The last year that this committee ended up doing a budget was in 15. And I looked at and saw that the, we had an interim administrator before Mr. Carter. And that's when we had budget problems. I won't go into this. There's a lot of other detail about 17 and, and, and all, and that's that's gone by the boards. After it didn't get published, one of the members of the advisory committee presented a temperament advisory committee roles and recommendations to the selectmen. And I'm only going to read the last part. Recommendation. Well, he actually put he actually put in uh, off the article section six. It shall be the duty of the advisory committee to make an annual report of its doings with the recommendations relative to financial matters and conduct of a town business to be contained in the annual report. This the recommendation that was presented from the advisory is the advisory re committee report is a public document and not subject to editing by anyone other than the public body from which it was issued. The 16th edition version does not include transfers brought before the committee and which were viewed, discussed, not approved. There was additional uh, information that the, the final warrant article can include loan durations. So that would, he also talked about. Knowing that, it's unfortunate that it happened. It's passed. I hope we learned from that. But the, the key point I want to make is that there wasn't much as far as transfers. Mm -hmm. The next document I want to take an end up with uh, some of my committee members, and uh, uh, you'll have to look this up. I, didn't, I got this late in it, was on September 3rd, uh, the uh, advisory committee ended up, uh, it was brought forth by the chairman after talking with the TA that sometime in October on, uh, on a workshop that we were going to be talking about the end of the year transfers. And I'll just read one of the things that, that uh, one of the, I won't mention the individual thing. I, he agrees, but doesn't want the select board to influence our decision, nor us to influ influence their decision. I mean, that's his comments, not mine. That's in the record, per se. So I just want to take an end up letting everybody know that. The next notification that we got was on September 4th from one of the select board members was the town of Montague financial management policy. I reviewed this and I just, I went through this many, many times and I didn't see a policy per se about end the year transfers. And I guess from that, the, the, the meeting on the, on the, the uh, 3rd of September, the impression was that it was going to be a policy from another community. The next one we got was on September 4th. It had a request for uh, request for transfer from the reserve fund. I don't understand why we received it because it was actually uh, end of year transfers. So that meeting took place on October the 7th. And 
I have to pick and end up saying, unfortunately, because of health issues that I had, I was, I was going through radiation. I was unable to even attend the meeting Zoom, but we did have a quorum at the meeting. And what came out of that, basically, it was between minutes four and minutes 42 and, and a half. You can see I looked at that. I, I looked at that meeting multiple times so I could understand what transpired between the two. And out of that meeting, basically, and it's in the minutes of the selectmen, that the consensus by the, the select board was they can end up updating it. Uh, they did present, they did present one at that meeting. And I again I didn't I, I didn't dawn on me until I looked over again. And unfortunately, there was, and I, I talked I talked to the PA about this today already. On October 24th, uh, there was uh, a uh, an email put out by the administrator and it CC the advisory committee. The advisory committee did not receive it. I I keep all my emails. I looked and looked and looked lo lots of times spending to think and end up saying what it said and, and trying to take and end up understanding what, what what's going on here. I also looked in the the emails on the town website multiple times trying to and see if it was in there and I just didn't get it. I didn't find it. So that, that's that's an issue. I, I talked to the administrator and he, we talked about that. We don't we don't know where the breakdown was, but unfortunately it was. And like I said, consensus by the by the board uh, for going forward. Out of that meeting, and this is this is my interpretation of what I heard in the meeting. And I, I guess you'll have to look at it, take it in the for those that were there, you probably you probably remember this. That the con basically consensus was taken in the uh, maybe having a joint meeting and having the end of year transfer presented. The uh, advisory committee basically said that they would end up being there, that they would end up uh, at their discretion whether they would vote that night or some other night and use their documentation per se. But the, 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 the select board went ahead. There had to be a rewrite. That rewrite, in my understanding, one of, one of the select board members who made it at the end of the meeting is to take and end up having the uh, rewrite uh, of the, the policy sent to the advisory committee for their review so we could end up looking at it and whether we wanted some changes or whatever. That didn't happen. Don't know why. And we were supposed to it was supposed to happen right after the uh, the next the next meeting of the advisory committee. Well that didn't happen. It, it took me a while to find this and I looked at, uh, at a whole bunch of other transfers and this number one transfer eluded me until I saw it on April 28th. That's a lot of months later, but that's that's beside the point. April 28th, 2021? Uh, yes. Okay. I just wanted to clarify yes. that. <laughs> it, it, was, it was item 5J and it spelled out the policy. And it was voted by the, by the selectmen that night. Uh, I, I can give you the vote too, but that's, it was 5-0. On the 5th, 5-5-21, that went into the uh, uh, the uh, financial, financial management policy. So it, they voted it and it was in. So these, and, and I don't know why the advisory committee didn't talk about it anymore, probably because we didn't receive a copy of it. And just about the time of the 28th, all the members of that were that are not here resigned or the, their end of term ended up at annual town meeting.
The next thing that I received was on June 17th, uh, minutes of some meetings. And I want to point out that this was the finance committee meetings minutes uh, where the where the uh, select board met. I thought that was kind of strange. I said, selectmen going to an advisory or a finance? That doesn't happen in this community. <laughs> yeah. Not not to have not to have a quorum. Good, bad, or indifferent. It just I thought that was strange. Present company accepted to be a right. <laughs> exactly. And I, and I looked at that and I went, okay. I saw some strange things in there, and I said, that's strange. Sorry, we dropped. And I went, wow. I have never seen this at, to take and end up having the, the, the select board go to a meeting. They must highly respect their finance committee. Uh, that's that's the only thing I can end up saying. And then he goes on to say that the selectmen meet on Mondays, the uh, the uh, uh, advisory or finance committee uh, meets on Wednesdays. Uh, the select board, let's see, every, they, every Wednesday, the uh, advisory <coughs> meeting and the select board meet uh, most most often every week with occasions uh, weeks off in the, in the summer. And that's not unusual for anything. So I, I, I just looked at this and I said, the FinCom meets every week Winter and summer, select board meets, and FinCon meets once or twice a month in the summer, and, and the select board joins in when they have over, overlapping on it. Wow, that's a different process, but they don't have a, a document per se. And I, as I said, I, I, when I looked, at, I didn't catch it at first, but when I, I did look at the, the minutes and I went, finance committee and select board minutes. And it was on a Wednesday, I said, they're going to the finance committee. Doesn't happen here. And I want to point that out because the the uh, the actual bylaw that or, or a, a document that the that the select board put in was taken end up inviting us to their meeting and uh, and end up discussing the end of year transfers. But there isn't that many. I don't think it's a bad idea for the two boards to meet on occasions. Mm -hmm. I have been a proponent of that, of that all the time that I've been on for the nine years. There's been times that I have made invitations to the select board's chairman. That doesn't say that they can. I just said that we invited them. Mm -hmm. 
there's been a couple of occasions where they did attend, but the, those are gen generally pre town meetings where they showed up and they wanted to take end up hearing firsthand what what this uh, what this committee had to say. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the roll up of the India process. Process, and I, I don't know if any of the other committee members had any questions of me. I don't have all the answers. I I did a lot of research. If you have questions, I try to answer them. I don't have any questions. I have a couple of comments. I will admit that um, I like the idea of having a joint meeting of the select board and the advisory committee to at least review the end of year transfers. Um, I think that's a better use of not only the department heads time, um, but also the committee's time because number one, the department heads only have to present once rather than twice. Um, but also the committees only have to be there once. And in all honesty, the select board probably has a lot of the same questions that advisory committee has, and you're probably killing two birds with one stone by having that joint meeting and by getting all the questions out at once. Um, I think that one of the keys is that, and this would be my greatest concern, um, and I'm going to go back to, um, if I can get there. I have a couple other comments yeah. that I didn't um, until you until you said that, yeah. if you want to talk about it. Um, so hang on a second. I promise you I'll be there in a second. I got it all printed here. Um, here we go. So I'm going to go back to the Mass General Law 40, uh, Chapter 44, Section 33B, um, that um, the selectman with concurrence of the Finance Committee or other entity, other entity in this case being advisory yeah. committee, the, the terms are the terms are interchangeable. Um, may transfer within the last two months with the concurrence of the finance committee is the key terminology there. Um, that would mean to me that we can hold that joint meeting to hear any questions. However, the votes must be separate. Okay. It could not be vote as committee of a whole. And the re and what I'm gonna and I'm gonna give an I'm gonna give a, a theoretical example of that that would apply this year. Let's say, for example, we had a transfer and we were going to vote as committee of the whole. This year, we're, select board's always five members. That's by election. That's never going to change. But in this case, this year, advisory committee right now has five sitting members out of an active seven. Okay. Technically, if the advisory committee was completely against something, but the select board was completely for something, you could have a 5-5 five -five vote. All of select board voting yes, all of advisory committee voting no, and it would fail. Okay. And it probably would, in that case, the same thing would probably happen even if you had separate votes, because then advisory committee or you select board would vote on it, it'd be 5 0, it would get taken to the advisory committee, they'd vote 0 5, and it would still fail. But if there's a split vote, there would be a problem. Let's say, for example, advisory committee. Let's say, let's say, for example, we had a, 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 a committee of the whole vote. Advisory committee said on something it was two yes and three no. But then select board voted five oh yes. That would be where we'd have a problem. Yeah. Because you would then you would not have concurrence. If you had done those votes separately, you would have had the select board five oh yes, it would have gone to advisory, they would have gone two, three, no, and it would have failed. Under the committee as a whole. It would have passed. So that's where we need to make sure. I, I have no problem with the joint meeting to go over all of those things. But we need to make sure that whatever the votes are, if the order is it has to be select board votes, and then it goes to advisory, then we have to make sure that those things are separated. And that could be something as simple as in the joint meeting, select board does their vote. Okay, and then at, after the joint meeting, we adjourn the joint meeting, advisory committee convenes and does all of their votes immediately thereafter, and we have the final results. And then we just do the transfer documents like we usually do. Mr. Bennett. It, uh, at some meetings, and it's a play on words, I think. Yeah. But at a joint meeting, you can have both entities host the meeting. Yeah. And in my town government, it would, mm -hmm. you know, show up as your button head, you know, yep. conflicting people. But you go to the meeting, it's two separate entities, they call the order, they call the order, and 
you you're in the same room, but you have two separate votes. Yep, and I think so it wouldn't be it would be the same as if you were meeting on different nights <laughs> or in different rooms. Yeah. It would be right now it would be three to two yep. advisory and five old board of selectmen. Right. Uh, it passes, and then then it would pass. Right, it would exactly. Be the same thing. Yeah, but I, I get your point about like people say a joint meeting. Well, they're all together. Right. You don't have a separate. You know that's where you get the conflict thing you were talking about. But I think if you well, um, well post it. If you have two post two meetings, you call the order. You call the order, and when it comes time to vote, everybody kicks the tires on all the things. Yep. Okay. Who wants to be? You know, flip a coin. Who yep. goes first? Don't matter. Uh, I would assume since the select board would call them, ask you to come, they would all give all yep. the degree. But for the vote, it would be okay. Select board mm -hmm. vote. Advisory vote. Next yeah. time, advisory vote. Yeah. So you you vote, and mm -hmm. if you vote five vote against, well, so be it. You know, the transfer doesn't it is what it is. Just <laughs> like if we're, yeah. we're on different Wednesdays and Thursdays. So. Right. Exactly. Uh, and for the, the confluence of time and the uh, efficiency is one of the reasons that Makes sense. I brought this mm -hmm. idea forward yep. because it's not like the old days when. The advisory committee used to have two town meetings. This room would be full. Right. Then department heads, selectmen, the town coordinator, the mm -hmm. town accountant. You name it, they'd all be in there. I mean, they're all there. Yep. Going questions and everything. Mm -hmm. Somewhere, somehow, I don't know when exactly it happened, maybe 13, 14, somewhere in there. Yeah. People all of a sudden, plus now you have the TV. So right. The CTV, they do such a great job. Yep. I can sit home, two screens, watch two meetings at the same time. Well, I might be the only one doing that, but when you but people don't have to come, <laughs> but they do. So the residents don't come, right? Because they just want to watch and see what happens. Sure. And now you can ask questions on the Facebook mm -hmm. thing. Uh, and department heads, that whatever reason, they and employees, they it's like, I'm not going to three different meetings. Right. I, I just I don't have time. I don't want to go. Mm -hmm. I, I've been the one. Why can't they all get together? And so that was the other part of my my reasoning uh, for that. And it's I look at the the policy and the form of the transfers, mm -hmm. both reserve fund and end of the year. And it speaks to you know we should have a representative in there because we'll have questions yep. and this and that. Again, everybody can be in the same room mm -hmm. at the same time. It's easy to get mm -hmm. the accountant, the department head, whomever is making the request, town administrator, and mm -hmm. we can all hash it out. And, the ties. Yep. Uh, and I've looked at a couple other communities. Uh, just I just like to see where I am with my mm -hmm. ideas from, like uh, way off base, or, sir. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. anyway, but uh, either on board select or the others. But the town of uh, Ashburnham, mm -hmm. uh, they have them joint meetings. Mm -hmm. They had it in, in 19 and 20. Mm -hmm. They may actually discuss the one, they go over the warrant mm -hmm. articles in Jointly. joint meetings. Uh, the town of Ayr mm -hmm. does it. Uh, in, uh, they actually did reserve transfer this year. So again, they, they meet and they list who's there mm -hmm. and they have. A joint meeting minutes, mm -hmm. but then you can find you know, finance committee minutes and the select minutes for those for those meetings. And the votes so are in there. It's it's not just, and I don't I wouldn't care if we were just the only one doing it. But right. there are other towns that are doing it. That it, do makes, it, and it they, makes more they sense. Kind of meet, yep. Like I said, these towns go, and again, in the yesteryear, it used to be you know the select one would go to three town meetings. Right. Uh, Somewhere along the line. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I think but, uh, yeah. that's my whole idea with this to get the board, the mm -hmm. committees working together again. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of reasons economy of time, efficiency. Mm -hmm. Some things have changed now. You can take money out of any fund. You don't have the restrictions you used to pre 16. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was my reason. And the, the, finan the financial management policy that speaks to. The joint meeting thing it needs some some tweaking because it like some a lot of a lot of things in government it, it the first the first runs never never it, 
never if it's never yeah yeah no no the first run the first runs the first runs never perfect you can always tweak it a little bit yeah i i, I get that uh, I? Roll. Yeah. Uh, in 16, uh, 62, 62, 32, 32. 32. There was a bunch of them done at annual town meeting, mm -hmm. and they are in the report uh, under the annual town meeting record right. that's mm -hmm. included in the report. And I think some of the transfers that came in front of the advisory committee was in the there was a financial addendum done because there was a bunch of stuff that right. didn't get into the report. Okay. Uh, and I am the person who wrote, I believe, what Will referred to in the uh, report to the annual town meeting mm -hmm. where I commented on that. It might not have been the specific one he did, but I, I did put that in a report uh, at the comments mm -hmm. of, of the advisory committee to town meeting. Now, how many people picked up the copy and read it all the way through? I don't know, but uh, it did speak to that. Mm -hmm. So, but if editing the committee's reports to any town report is should be a no no, yeah. it should be a bad Absolutely. thing. Absolutely prohibited. I mean, if you have yeah, the date wrong, yeah, you know, you have to copy and say, hey, did you mean yeah. 2018? Because you got 16. Oh, right. copy and paste right. it. Yeah, fix that. Exactly. You know, but other than that, put yeah. that up there. Did you, did you mean this there? Yeah. You know, Things like that, but the figures and numbers and, and so forth, yep. it, it really needs to be left alone. Yes, and again, sir. it's you can go back and see the reports and then you can see stuff, but it really needs to be uh, that needs to be corrected and then not allowed. That's yes. why when I die, all the books that he doesn't have, he's <laughs> gonna get. Can we please stop about? Oh, can we please stop talking about her, you dying? No, no, <laughs> yeah, the city is getting no younger. But I also, I have already, I have already. Guys, check out first if they want to. Chairman, if I can add a couple things. Go ahead. At that meeting, thank it, you, Mr. Chairman. No, you're welcome. Thank you. The uh, persons that were there said that they want to take and be autonomous. Basically, they didn't want to take and end up uh, a separate, but not at that particular meeting. Mm -hmm. They chose it again. Up doing it. Now I looked at the the thing, and it says uh, in the the one that's in the the financial policy, mm -hmm. it basically says we're going to be, invite the advisory committee mm -hmm. uh, to a meeting before uh, July 15 cutoff yep. for a joint meeting. Yep. I mean that's that's what it says. Yep. So I've got the uh, the other thing, and like Mr. Bennett said, that it was unfortunate. Well, all we can do is go forward. Yep. You know. Learn from uh, learn from our mistakes. Those who those Adam, who do not learn from mistakes are doomed to repeat them, and we don't want to be that. Adam, Adam, and it, that's, makes that's one of the reasons I brought that up. Is, is two things is that in that report there was a number of uh, in sixteen there was a number of requests that were were transfers were approved, mm -hmm. and there was pushback on some that didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. They would change it around because. That committee did its research mm -hmm. and found that, they, that some of the transfers were not viable mm -hmm. and they were resubmitted. Mm -hmm. And eight pages, yes. The bad part about it, and I want to point this out because, like I said, we our, our member, Tom uh, Paul Grubb, who I think is, was one of the better members that we've had mm -hmm. in, in recent years, went before the select board and made that presentation about you know you shouldn't be doing our cutting our, our thing uh, our uh, reports and i'll say there was resistance from the administration well, on that statement we, now we don't and, have and it was more or less like mm -hmm. we can make cuts to anybody's report and i don't i i don't look at just ours i look at all of them and say that wasn't right per se i mean i know of, this is getting a little off subject, but it Let's, does have that, that one year, and uh, it's it's unfortunate that, that that happened. And it's hopefully that that's a we've learned from that lesson, and we don't have those type of things happen. No. And I think, and I, and I think that I like to hope that, like, like I said again, those those who do not learn from their mistakes are bound to repeat them. Yeah. And I I like to think that the with the composition of this board and hopefully getting new members on here that we can. That we will educate on these items and ensure that they understand 
why we where we are where we are and what has happened in the past that we will not be doomed to repeat ourselves well, I as think well. A lot of it has to do with the attitude of the town administrator mm -hmm. too. And Adam's willing to work with us. Yep. And the select board's willing to work yep. with us. And that's a huge step forward. So I can see things are going to be better. Mm -hmm. The history, Jeffrey values it as much as I do, mm -hmm. because 50 years from now, somebody's going to pick that book up and see what happened, what they did they do, it. and there won't be anything there. And that's unfortunate. And one more comment from me, and, uh, and then I'm going to shut up. Then we'll, um, well, no, I want to make sure that April has any comments as well, because she's, yeah. I know she's been working, she's uh, she's working on the minutes as well. I want to make sure if she has any comments that she uh, or questions that she asks them and makes them. Um, but I highly value collaboration. Um, I think that it's very important for this board and the select board to understand what each other are thinking and to make sure that we are, I'm not going to say necessarily on the same page because there are going to be situations we're going to, we're, I'm sure we're going to agree to disagree. And that's healthy and it's part of, it's part of public debate. Yes. It's the way, it's the way that it should be. That's good. That's um, exactly right. But at the same time, I want the select board to know that anything that they think might be concerning advisory committee, please reach out and we will we'll put it on an agenda. We'll invite the invite we'll invite the, the select board to come and, and, and discuss it. And we'll do so as a joint, we'll do so as a unified body so that we can again understand what we're each thinking and if we agree to disagree, well, we agree to disagree. That's again, that's the nature of public debate. It happens. But let come to us just as we would, just as I hope that you understand that I would come to you if there was a concern there. And let's discuss it. Okay. Collaboration is key. And I think that the more that the two boards collaborate, and not just the two boards, not just the select board and advisory board, but the advisory and the other town departments as well, the more collaboration we get, the more honest conversation we get amongst the boards. The better off not only the town government is going to be, but just the town in general is going to be. Yep. So, April, you've been very quiet. I want to make sure you have time to ask any questions or make any comments that you so that you need to. I just want to back up what you were saying. Mm -hmm. um, I think it is very important for the two boards to work together. I think it's very important for us to communicate and understand one another. Um, and I look forward to working with the board. And I hope that I do see change in the future. Mm -hmm. Um, I was apprehensive to join this board mm -hmm. um, because I felt as though the advisory board wasn't necessarily heard um, by the select board. So, yeah, I, I, I like to see this. Mm -hmm. um, I, I am hoping that there is change and I am looking forward to working with everybody. So to the select board, consider this your open invitation. If there's something you need from us, call me, email, whatever. Talk to us. There's there's something point. we need from you, we're going to do the same thing. So. And I want to point out that during that meeting, there was no opposition from the advisory committee mm -hmm. not to take and end up coming to a joint meeting and hearing the end of the year transfer. Right. Except the autonomy, as you said, about right. the votes, and they wanted to have discussion mm -hmm. separately. Yeah. But I want to point out, uh, and like you said, in the past, it has been an issue. This committee, not necessarily these individuals, mm. but over the, the length of nine years, there's been a number of times where the advisory committee has gone before select boards with a number of things, and it didn't work out very well in favor of the advisory committee, bringing some, some recommendations. It was generally not even, it was heard, but not heard, but not heard. And the, the, they can end up seeing a community that was specified in that meeting that they looked for the opinions of each other was to me what I'd like to take a see our community to. I mean, that's just re relaying it just what, what my fellow committee members. And I think to, like number one, tonight's a good olive branch. And number two, I think that we're starting to see that collaboration already. Because let's take a and just going back to our last meeting with the comments regarding the AC, yes. the uh, mini split. Yes. The select board took it up, they're advancing it. Yeah. So I think that that's a great first step 
to bridge the two boards. I can only speak for what I've seen so far. I've been here for a month, two months at this point, maybe. <laughs> Well, I'm still learning, so there's been action on the town trees. Yep, that the, I say that came that came out. I Adam, saw that and Adam's work yep. with that. Uh, there was there's a number of articles that, that we brought up that were addressed at the TA. He that. did he did address them. I see yep. some changes in discussing with him, and I think that's that's a positive thing. Mm -hmm. That's a very positive yep. thing that, that uh, uh, the uh, recommendations that this committee makes. Yep. That's what our job is. Yep. Our people have to understand. We represent the voters of this community, and we we go through a lot of data and stuff where most of the committee, the, the people in the community, don't have time to do that, especially yeah. nowadays with with how how how, how people's lives yeah. are, especially this last year, no. <laughs> growing up and, and everything else. Part of the reason people don't attend the meetings like they used to is they're still on Route 2 mm -hmm. and 495. When I was a kid or when I was younger even, everyone worked in town. Mm -hmm. Temple Stewart's was full, Conant and Ball was full. People worked in shops, little wood shops. Now people tend to travel more and they aren't always able to sit around. They don't even get home for supper. So if it wasn't for TCTV, this last year would have been a horror show that we never would have survived. Even I give you credit every time and I will continue to give you credit because you saved the town. You really did. You should have got an award for the most valuable person because without you, nothing would have moved. Nothing would have functioned. You and the girls and Sean and everybody else that works with you. you Make it give the ability of people to tune into what they want to watch, whether it be casual things like the farmers market or the businesses in town, but the serious things too, where the elderly lots of times can't drive after dark. So, you know, there is so much strength in this community. And the new people need to learn to tune in because they have more of a say than they did in the city. When you're in a city. You have a city councilor, but in, in town, for my poor husband, I said, oh, Bart, you're going to love town government. <laughs> that hasn't always been the, the easiest, but you do have a say, and you can speak out, and you can stand up for what you want and what you need. And like the tree, the tree um, paper that you put on for people in the community need some work done, they can fill it out instead of stopping some guy on the side of the road and saying, hey, I really have this tree that needs fixing. And then the guy forgets. So now they have a direct line to town hall and then he gets stuff done. So everything's an improvement. Yes. Thank you, my job. But you do, you can do a job, you can do a great <laughs> job, you do a great job. I'm your number one fan. Just no. Thank you, Steve. Thank so you, TC. Going, going forward, I want to take and just say that that that's the process. The selectmen have put it into their mm -hmm. financial policy. So we can discuss this at another meeting as to how we want to handle our mm -hmm. paperwork, etc. Yep. But that's I wanted to bring everybody up from where the, mm -hmm. the law is up until where we sit today mm -hmm. before we go forward and, and everything else. Yep. And like you've heard me say. Over the years, I have made many attempts, or the advisory committee has made many attempts to end up working with the select board. It has not been very positive. Well, it's this. And I, I have to relay that. Like, and she hasn't been on very long. I've watched for years. Have you? <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. I, 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 you know, <laughs> you've got to see a lot of things that were not were painful for us sitting here and trying to take and end up working on a positive side. Well, Fortunately, it, we oh. you have good advisory boards and you have some terrible. I have been on some bad ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And way back in the 70s, when I first got on, Judy Wilson, Mrs. Wilson, who owned the bus company, she was on the advisory board. Richard Galzetti, who worked at Simplex, he was on the advisory board. I learned 
but the rules change. They call you up and say, how do you want to vote on this? I can't do that stuff yeah. anymore. No. No. You know, things are a lot more serious now. Um, the law is more precise, mm -hmm. but it, it's like anything else. It's what you put into it. And this is a great education for anybody that is interested in town government. You cannot do any better than starting out here because you learn a lot about every department in town. This, this is this is really uh, not an easy job if you put you. I, I'm I'm of the gen. I'm, I guess I'm from the Kennedy generation. Now, don't ask someone what you can do. And, You're an engineer. Yeah, and that too. And, and a lot of the policies and everything that I. I cling to is because of my background mm -hmm. and we should follow policies because why have them if you don't follow them? Well, you yep. get in trouble if you don't follow that, them. That being one. Yeah. And time and time again, we don't follow them. Yeah, right and, that's, and that's another good reason why we want to revise. We want to take a look right. at our policies, make sure that they're revised and they're reflecting reflecting current standards. And, we'll, and we're going to do that this year. Right. Well. And it, it's, it's okay for us to have policies that are different than yep. theirs. But they, they represent our feelings about town yep. government. Mm -hmm. In the meanwhile, let's yeah. let's be the agent of change. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Let's be the agent of change and let's do let's let's make the let's 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 have that collaboration. Yeah. And you can only go up from here. Absolutely. So let's be the agent of change and let's 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 make sure that we are working with the boards and the departments to do the yep. good work of the town. Okay, we can do that. Yes, we can. Okay. All right. Any further discussion on the end of your transfer process? Yes, no, maybe. Board of Select Persons Financial Policy regarding the emergency reserve. Um, Mr. Spring. Yes. Uh, the reason I bring this up is that in the last uh, meeting, exactly always, <laughs> seems like time passes very quickly mm -hmm. here lately for old people. Uh, here we are halfway through the year, is that this was brought up as to, hey, listen, we, uh, there, there was one other thing that we didn't bring up is the, the uh, under the financial management policy of the town, the Board of Selectmen brought this forward is to the, the and, I, and I want to take to make sure I have the, the correct words, is the minimum, I think they're trying to take and make a, a minimum as to the amount of, of the uh, emergency reserve. I'm on both sides of the fence on this. And here's, here's my thinking. And, and I, I, I think everybody's got a copy because I, I make sure that everybody gets sent that back sometime. Is that during good times, the minimum sounds pretty good. In fact, we should, my, my theory has always been it should be, should be more there shouldn't be as much in other budget items and there should be more in, in the reserve. Other communities do it. They have 75 to 150 or more and we can go up to 5% of the budget. The bad thing is that if you have a minimum and you have a downturn, and I'd say a downturn because if we had tried this in 12, 13, 14, 15, if they can get this minimum, according to this, we've been in trouble. Oh, yeah. Because we we didn't have the money to take it and end up doing it. We had to take it in. I mean, the advisory committee actually, in some instances, they, they cut their budget in the past at the sake of making sure that other operations work. I mean, I know that for a fact, because I've been, I've, been, I've been on this thing so long. So. It, it goes both ways. So we have to be very, very careful. I see this. I I say, yes, it, there should be a minimum, but we have to be careful about doing that on downturns. And I don't want to take an end up saying that I, I see a downturn coming. The market is good. Housing, housings are really going, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> you, can't, you can't get enough of them to sell. Yeah. But, but this this area, even prior to 2008, before the big town downturn, is the housing market has always been on the lower side. Hence, it's really, really great for those folks.
that live close to Boston and have the type of jobs that allow them not to have to take a travel all, all the time into Boston. They can afford it out here. And anybody says that they, they come out here for the school, yeah, they might come out for the school, but Jesus, the housing prices are really low. With that, I mean, I don't know how long you've been into the business, but you probably saw them. Oh, well, I moved out here because of taxes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're being honest with me. Yeah. I've been here for 16 years. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, those are the type of things that draw people to your community. And the price of housing is uh, just astronomical, but it, it's still cheaper for people to. I, I mean, I, I, I was watching a show, well, and I think it was Chronicle, yeah. that they showed this one house uh, of this elderly gentleman, and they were talking to him about, and this was during talking about real estate, and they ended up saying, okay, I'll. I'll, 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 I'll off that topic. It, <laughs> that, it was, that it was really, it, the house was bought really cheap yeah. and it was worth over a million dollars. Yeah. Well, it's only worth a million dollars if somebody's going to spend a yeah, million right. dollars so, on it. Somebody can't afford his house in Boston. Yeah. That's that's the point I want to make. So that's that's the point I want to take and make about uh, the uh, thing. But this if was we have the money, Boston. if we have the money, we should have enough money in the reserve in case we have a problem. Yeah. There's no if it's a control thing, we had a control problem with Mr. Terrazini because he didn't want money in stabilization because he had to come to town meeting and ask. Right. Yeah. That's not appropriate. It's the people's money. Mm -hmm. It's your money. It's your tax dollars. And so that it's got to be a give and take mm -hmm. on both sides. We're not going to sit here and say, oh, we're just going to be meanies and we're not going to give you what you want. That's crazy. Yeah. We're working for the community, mm -hmm. you know, and so you have to, it has to, you have, but if there is enough money and it, the, the reserve needs to be used in the right way, right. we haven't been doing that either. It's not a savings plan. Right. And, I, and I think that earlier when we used the reserve late last year, that's the right way. Yeah. We used that correctly. Yeah. Now, FY19, the reserve was 35750 FY20, it was 47.5. FY20, I'm sorry, I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't know what was what FY20. FY21, it was 47.5. FY22, it's 50,000. So it's moving in the right direction. We're trying, we're, the, the, I think the idea is to, rather than just perform transfers at the end of the year, is to start directing people towards yeah, the emergency reserve. And I think that's Mr. Lamont Bain's, one of Mr. Lamont Bain's guiding principles is to start pushing people yeah. that way. If there's a problem with the fire truck and the transmission goes and there's no money, mm -hmm. To fix it, there's it the money here. right there, yeah. you know, and that's how it should be used. So, and, and by the way, did we have put quite a bit of money into fire equipment out of the American American Reserve? Mm -hmm. There's at least two instances I'm aware of. Yeah, so that's you know I mean, you have just, to do things. And it, 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 we, we did push that back out. for the, that fire chief that one year because he came in and he was going to use almost seventy five percent of what we had. Mm -hmm. We pushed back. And it got lowered by about nine thousand dollars, which he found a way to take and end up doing it, which was a win for him and a win for us to have some additional monies for other transfers that year. Yeah, but you know, it's it's common sense, and I don't think our 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 role here is to be hard asses. <laughs> we're we're trying. We got to work with everyone, and that's the way it is. So. Yeah. Okay. Any questions on the uh, the emergency reserve or comments? All right. No, the only comment I have is that the Mass General Law only calls for the advisory that they can end up dispensing it. Right. Some other communities, for whatever reason, they do it differently. This is Templeton. We follow Mass General Law. Yep. That's what we're that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. All right. The May BV, um, I'm sorry, not that yet. Um, annual town meeting article 30 from May 19th, 2018. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love our chairman. I mean, I only brought it up, I only brought it up as a question because we we got an email and I said I, I went and said, are we gonna have a discussion about this? 
And as you see, he's got my name tagged to it. <laughs> And I want to who asks. <laughs> Let me say this in going through the response. What are you talking about? Explain it to people. Yeah, yeah. The only so, thing I have pushback and big time pushback is the town may have voted for 58,000, but they had it, you had it illustrated below as to what the breakout is. Mm -hmm. I did not and cannot agree with your analysis on using the monies, if it's not used for one thing to use for something else. That's where we got into, what we as a community get into trouble time and time again. If it's, if it's in the Warren article per se, let's do it. Because time and time again, and, th and this is from the advisory committee, uh, uh, and, and Deb can end up doing this. We had a, an article, and it was for, for the police station. It was supposed to be a two year debt exclusion. Huh. I mean, you can, you all can go get the documentation. It's no two years, and it's no debt. <laughs> and yeah. it, it's, it's almost two and a half times what was presented. <laughs> so you, it, it was in the summary that it was stated. If it's not in the article, then we don't do it. If it's in the article, and that's what you're going to hear us say time and time again, at least me, I, I think, I, and probably Bev, yeah. that if it's not in the article, please don't try to take it in the, that's why people get pissed. Yeah. I'm sorry for that. But that's why they, they end up not coming, they vote for something and things have changed. I mean, I went up to, to take it end up uh, looking at uh, Gilman Waite the, the other night with my wife who were coming back from getting ice cream. I said, oh, let's, let's go buy a field. And I did. And I saw the infield room being used. And I think that was brought to your attention. I think you were addressing it. It was, it, to me, it was inappropriate to think and end up having the individual that was using the infield groomer and uh, uh, town equipment. Uh, he's not a town employee, unfortunately. Uh, at least. I don't know if he asked. Don't know why well, he has a key to the, the thing, not the but that's something that you need to take into having that discussion with, with Mr. Uh, administrator. Well, but I mean, that's my biggest thing about uh, about your your whole thing is that the extra monies. Yeah. If it's donated for something, please don't try to take and say we can move it to something else. No, if, if you're going to buy, did you just state that we had a, a non-town employee? Using town equipment up at Gilman Lake. Is that what you just said? Uh, the defined nine non employee because we are considered crazy. Somebody who does employee. not work for the BPW right. have access right. to that equipment. Okay, yes. He does not work for the BPW. And, is, and should not have access to that equipment. No. That's no one, my thought. My, me I think this. that was so if he on. were to get hurt during that process, the town would be held liable. Right now, it's under review. Um, this was a member of the forwarding committee, and I could speak to that right now until I talk to the appropriate department. And the reason, the reason I brought it up is when we end up doing this particular building, we had a lot of volunteers. Some of them were crazy. I mean, they worked for the town and different uh, on committees, etc. We all had to sign a waiver. I think it ended up being in here to help the community. I think Jeffrey was on I mean, the roof, weren't you, Jeff? Or in the attic? Yeah. And that, I, that was, there was a lot of them. I mean, I had I had a lot of people come to me and we had to take it, you got to sign this. Why? I don't care. No. It's for it's for your protection and conflict. Yes. That's, that I'd like I to bring it issue, back to the, I I think think the, bring it back to the if, order if we, of what we were supposed to be doing. If, this we, if we vote for something and you don't vote, you don't buy it. I think you need to come back to town meeting and say, um, we didn't buy that. This is what we would like instead, especially if it's a different item or if it's a, big, a different amount of money. You can't never, never, never pay attention to the summary. The summary, they could tell you the sun is not going to come up for the next week and a half. Doesn't matter. You're voting on the article, and the article is what you 
what you have to, it has to be true. You know, and this has been a real, real, real problem for a while. Well, the Texas came up this last year too on the, on, on the multi-machine there. Mm -hmm. It said 200 yep. something for a multi-machine. Yep. Not attachments. Right. If they had put all the attachments in it, mm -hmm. people would, and believe me, people are, people are out there already saying, we voted for it, and this is what they did. I mean, they've heard the discussions. I mean, they're not prone to not listen to, a lot of folks will listen to the slick board as well as us, and they, and they hear these things. Yeah, I we, think that's we what need they to want. Do the, all, all, it comes down to, we need to do the right yeah. thing. If it's in the if it's in the article, that's how it should be. Period. Well, Mr. Lamontane, the town administrator, has taken the center seat, and uh, I'd like to have him. Uh, Serious stuff. Man. I'd like to have him speak to this, and uh, let's get an explanation from from <laughs> from that end of things. Mr. Lamontane, please uh, please be my guest. So, if I can, um, this is a follow up to a question that was raised for the BBA from eight end of April. Uh, and then the question arose, uh, with Mr. Spring brought up on the, the appropriation of the fire training room AC. Mm -hmm. I understand the optics, I get it. Yep. Uh, you see what we did. This this article, this article was passed before I even started working yep. for the town. However, I understand the optics. We have since, um, if you see the animal control officer uh, vehicle. That was a pro the money was appropriated. I believe it was twenty five thousand top of my head. We went for a, an additional appropriation uh, because we couldn't fit out and get the animal control officer vehicle. Mm -hmm. So we went back to town meeting for that difference. Here, what I've done is I reached out to the Department of Revenue Division of Local Services. I've had a conversation with town council, uh, which because it says generally illustrated and we're staying below the appropriation. Uh, he believes it's okay, but if I hear back from the state saying that there should be a change, then I'll make that adjustment. But I wanted to give you the information because this board had the question on the, the money within the uh, that fire training room AC. So I provide you with that information. I understand the optics isn't the greatest and from now on we'll just try to do things like we did with the ACO vehicle. So, you know, that's all people expect is, you know, a little transparency. Mm -hmm. That's all. Mm -hmm. it, it, there's other, uh, other items that you're aware of that got pushed back by a number of people because it, people thought it was bait and switch. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go into no, the details on this. It just, it just can't happen. We have to, we have to be upfront. And if we if we make a mistake, let's eat it and yeah. do the thing. Turn around, and do the right thing. Own it and make it right. Right. Yeah. I made my fair share. You know I owned them. Mm -hmm. We all we all have those. None of us is perfect. <laughs> None of us is perfect. Certainly but I want I wanted to get that information to you, like, and I shared that with the. Uh, I believe it was Mr. Bennett sent an email about yep. it, and I followed up because the advisory committee was on that email as well. Yes, and I, I brought it up. That's why we uh, like originally, yeah, okay. just for discussion. And my only thing was about what I said about if it was spelled out, broken out. We, we can't do that. I, I mean, that's my opinion. We can't do that because people people see it as as not doing the right thing. They voted for one thing, and it's changed. And there's too many times we've voted for something, yeah. and it's changed. People okay. don't like that. Well, I think it's if, if you money. have a problem, you can go back. He can come and say, we, at a selectors meeting, we have decided not to do that. And you can ask people, to, will you have enough town meetings so that the world isn't going to stop evolving? You can right. say that mm -hmm. this is what we have decided in the best interest of the town and ask them to vote. We vote. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it just makes sense. Even if it comes up with, like, a, like my chairman said, a, a joint meeting between mm -hmm. the two entities. And Let's have it. We represent the, the, the town's meeting. Yeah, but people. if it's a town meeting vote, he has town to meeting, do a town meeting vote. We give our we give our recommendations to them as their representative 
because they don't have the time to look stuff up. And that's why I think, uh, to the point of the joint discussion, I think that's something with the ARPA funds that we should be looking yep. at. Too. Mm -hmm. yeah. so totally agree. Talk about $2.4 million coming to Templeton. So. Any other questions or concerns regarding the ATM Article 30 from May 8, 19, 2018? Other than what I are we good? Yep, I'm good. Good, good. Okay. April? Good. I'll stand a motion to move to new business. I need, the, I need the motion first. Motion. Thank you. I think that's second. Second. I have a motion from Ms. Cover and a, and a second from Ms. Bartolomeo to move to new business. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries at 7.50 p.m. New business. Budget versus actual for May 2021. I'll accept the motion to enter the BVA from May 2021 into the record as read and reviewed. I have a motion from Ms. Bartolomeo. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Ms. Cover to enter the BVA from May 2021 into the record as read and reviewed. Let us begin discussion. Who wants to go first? I'll, I'll, I'll put my foot out there all the time. And then and, and Mr. And Mr. Lamontan has graciously decided to join us this evening so that I don't have to send him a five page long letter with seven motions of requesting information. <laughs> we can just ask for it now. <laughs> so, so thank you, Adam, for being here. We appreciate it. Just to point out that the same things that I have pointed out, even when we did the budget, we have employee support on a number of, of uh, apartments that are way under way mm -hmm. under but then i come along and see two departments and i went if they can do it why can't the rest of them do it and I, i'm not trying to take an end up saying bad things about either department mm -hmm. it was the police department and the highway department they used considerably more money than all the other departments if they can end up putting for employee support especially especially now where the pandemic put us into using Zoom, if there was any training required for any of these employees, we should have utilized that for those employees. I mean, the, the money's there to pick and, the only way you get better employees all the way around if they get trained. Mm -hmm. If we didn't train the people and give them that opportunity, and, and they, didn't, they didn't perform up to what they need to. It's our fault, it's not theirs. But if we have it and it's not taken into consideration and they, and they don't, they choose not to go to the training, that's, that's on them. And if they, they get written up as to uh, not performing a particular function and they, they could have gone to the training on that function, that should be in their record per se. I mean, I, I ran into this when I was in management, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty strong on that. In their defense, though, yeah. they didn't utilize the funds. The classes may have been canceled because mm -hmm. of the pandemic. Especially if it was something that had to be physical in-person training. And one thing that just comes off the top of my head would be CPR. Right. That kind of has to be physical in-person so training. <laughs> I understand that, but on, on some of them, I understand that, but there was, I, I saw two departments that, <laughs> that especially the two departments that I, I talked about, was, they had to pick and end up doing some hands-on uh, for the like, truck or whatever, mm -hmm. or on equipment and the, the police department, I'm sure uh, they had to pick and end up doing uh, certain stuff, going to, going to uh, classes or whatever, and they, they, took, they took an opportunity to do that. I mean, there's uh, there's other circumstances, but I'm, I'm pointing out that it was under underutilized, and we need to pick and end up getting better at that. Mm. If the, if we put the money there, let's expect them. If 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 they're not using it, or they don't have the training to do it, let's put the money somewhere else that we really need it. Sure. Go ahead. So for fiscal year 23, uh, the select board. I will have the discussion, of, which I anticipate will be level funding. Uh, what I will uh, promise you is when the department heads come in and we discuss their budget, I will follow up and see why those accounts are underutilized. Mm -hmm. And because they're 
we're looking at level funding, we're going to have to make the best use of all those sub accounts to make sure that we can make within the budget. Uh, if the select board chose to level fund, which I'm expecting to be moving forward in that direction. Uh, with, with the anticipation, I do believe that we have a little bit of a structural deficit, um, which will help give us time to reconfigure ourselves and make ourselves adjust to those differences <coughs> in the budget numbers. But the good point, um, whenever the advisory committee notices something, be sure to let me know mm -hmm. and I will follow up and see what accounts are underutilized. <coughs> and I, I have note of that. Mm -hmm. Believe me, th this committee has done that over the years at one time. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't, I didn't necessarily agree with it. We were given access to VADA uh, and, and some level of training that it was not, at least in my estimation, we as a committee didn't utilize the money correctly. And I saw that as a negative for a committee that's supposed to be watching money. If we didn't, we didn't end up doing it. it. It made more sense to get the information from the department head. It was more efficient to do it that way than to have seven bumbling people get into VADAR and try to search out information that they were looking for it just didn't it just didn't make sense well if i can say based on the concerns of the advisory committee as well as some of the select board members uh we went down and uh went down with the tree ward into the templeton uh mm -hmm. center and um, mr sozik will be working there with his crews uh starting the week of july 12th so mm -hmm. he anticipates to be using the rest of those funds that were brought up and um, I think you'll see significant improvement at the common um, in regards to the trees there. But those are the things where I think, and it was mentioned here, collaboration, where something gets brought up, comes to our attention, we get the information out on the tree removal process. Yeah. Um, people are aware of it, they get the information out there, and I think it's, it's a way of making our community safe and beautiful at the same time. So. Um, I want to give credit to those, everybody involved with that and uh, I thank Mr. Sozik because he did yep. uh, go out there and he followed up. So I, I appreciate that. The thing that I would like to see in the future, you know, you just get your feet wet, would be if we ever get a student in here in the mount or something to do a real inventory of everything we own. And I really would like to see us work toward getting an organization for supplies. Mm -hmm. because, I was going to make that comment. Before. Yeah, it drives me crazy. Yep. We spend so much money on it. it well, seems like it's it's, it's been very wasteful like, in the past. And not only that, I feel like I, I feel like just looking at this BBA that there are departments that are using that as kind of like a catch-all fund, and they're not expending it. Yeah. Um, I mean, some examples, just on a brief cursory review. Uh, town accountant has 1500 allocated for supplies. They spent 370. They got a month left, according to this BVA. You can't tell me they're going to go through $1,100. Well, they might, but I, I have to. Well, there's one department that I have to pick and end up saying that they actually wait till the end of the year. That's emergency management. I don't know why. And it's, it's come up in the past. And then last Zong, probably in June, they go off and make purchases of paper yeah. or, or water, and that's exactly what I want to. I, I don't want to see is that yeah. we're gonna. You're yeah. seeing you. You have. You're gonna have departments that are with one month to go have a chunk of money left in supplies, and they're gonna go out well, and buy probably, a ton of stuff in order could, to cover it. And, we could probably yeah. buy for every department and mm -hmm. get a really good deal from yeah. some company mm -hmm. yeah. where we do stuff piecemeal yeah. and it ends up costing us up to yeah. kazoo. Another one we went with Staples. And because uh, WV Mason or whatever the, the big company is that delivered, they were charging much more than we were the staples, and there was a savings. And that was with uh, the uh, town coordinator, uh, Jeff Ritter, had ended up instituting that. And there was some savings that year. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't. It wasn't the full scope that then, about know, purchasing. Everybody doesn't know. I could need envelopes, and somebody else's got. 
two draws full. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's good. You know, if you ever have the extra help and somebody needs a project, that would be a good one. Mm -hmm. And and like I said, it's, that, that was just one example. Yep. Treasure collector is another one. I know that at the end of the year they get busy, so they're going to burn through some of it now, probably, and that's fine. But ninety four ninety nine all allocated, seventy nine oh seven still remaining. They're not going to burn through almost eight thousand dollars worth of supplies in a month. But um, see, that was I, also, I know they will burn through some of it. But see, that was also a sneaky way to get free cash mm -hmm. and and like i said I, I, no, and like i, I would, said in my comments they're using it as a slush fund i, I would rather yeah. see us have an honest budget yep. if we need extra money to be upfront with it say to people this is mm -hmm. what That's... we need and i would like to see a fall town meeting where we don't have another town meeting have our town meeting in may mm -hmm. and then fall town meeting should just be for and the year transfers, mm -hmm. but it wasn't playing out that way. And it's deceiving to the public because they think this is our budget. There's, but there's in reality, something instead of budget. Where they I like that. And I think that if if we're going to level fund for FY2023, which it sounds like that's where we're heading, then these are the sort of challenges we're going to need to make the department heads. Take a look at your current line items and what they're funded at. Take a look at what you've previously used and make your budgets line up to what you've previously done. They have to also yeah. understand this. And, I, and I'm one, I'd like to see them have tighter budgets and more in the emergency reserve. Yeah. Why do I say that? If we have them tight, tighter budgets, they'll watch their money very closely to the right. committee, off of the community. Mm -hmm. But if they need it, and if it's not budgeted, and it's unforeseen. That's what the emergency reserve is for. Mm -hmm. Other communities use it that way. Mm -hmm. They have tighter budgets, and they turn around and use it at the emergency reserve. It could be more money in stabilization. Yeah. And I don't think that should be a threat. I think some town administrators think it's a threat because they have to go to the public and ask. But most, I've never seen a time where people would say no just for the sake of saying no. Right. It, 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 they don't work that way. And yeah. like that, in the year transfer, I never saw us say no to them. I mean, they'd have to be absolutely off the wall. They were, and we, we rejected them. And they came back and they got approved. And they fixed you know, it and got approved. Right? Very yeah. seldom do we do you yeah. come into that kind of a position. So you, you can create a problem without even realizing it sometimes in it like know? i said the two years we had no. out, a, a large amount of india transfers was budgeting issues as far as i was concerned well yeah well, we didn't we, have it in the right places mm -hmm. and then we have to take it end up doing the the, the shuffle well, take yeah, we a little had money here and move it here well, take a little more from here and move it to this one take a little uh, six or eight departments had to take it end up supplementing this one budget mm -hmm. But yep. that's because everything was such a horror show. Exactly. So, exactly. you know, we're not exactly. there anymore. Thank God. Did they ever approve the coffee pot? Pardon me? No, you talked about the coffee pot. Was it ever approved? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. I just, I just, last well, time you brought that up, I was like, let's put it this way. I, I wait, objected wait, wait, to Jeffrey, that. Jeffrey. Your next step. I think it did get approved, but we found out what the, what, what the actual cost was after the fact. Mr. Bennett. I would just make a note with regards to the uh, emergency management mm -hmm. and the uh, CERT. Uh, if you think about like this past summer, you know, not a lot of stuff happened on the phone, mm -hmm. but this year I would anticipate hopefully yeah. uh, mm -hmm. a lot of the events they have. Mm -hmm. are be, Even the cultural uh, council, a lot of those uh, stuff in mm -hmm. mm -hmm. this things, outdoor events. And I'm just guessing here, but I'm assuming this, I would look at it like this. During the winter, they don't need right. a lot of water and sure. things. And if you buy it and you stick it someplace, hey, the heat goes out or it, it freezes. Yeah. yeah. If you don't, you're pretty sure you're not going to need that quantity. Mm -hmm. You just wait until the beginning of the summer. Yeah. So, okay, June, hey, I'm going to go out and buy 
the water. And now you're safe for six months. Yeah. If he, if he goes use, out, you get ice. They <laughs> use in the season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. The, the time of the season. When and it that's, did, that's just that, my thought yeah. on, on that. Particular when it did come up, and I asked that, uh, of the, the uh, and they do bring, oh, he, Rich does, he's very active in getting grants. Right. And, 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 I, and I'm not saying that it's not all no. legitimate. I'm, no, yeah, you, I'm, don't get me don't get me wrong on that one. What I what I'm what I'm really trying to highlight here is that if we're going to be level funded for fiscal year 2023, we need to challenge our department heads. We need to have them take a look at what their level funding looks like and put it where it belongs. Okay, if you're if you take a look at the last three years of your budgets, okay, and you are consistently underspending in your supply lines, but you're consistently overspending somewhere else, and you need to make transfers at the end of the year. Well, maybe you need to change your budget so that those numbers are different, yeah. even under a level funded budget. Let's let's challenge our department heads to take the time to really review these budgets if we're going to be level funded and make sure that they're putting the money where it needs we to be. You shouldn't have to do 50 you know? transfers. That's right, because because at the end of the day, they're going to make their own lives easier at the end of the year because they're not going to be coming for end of year transfers. And it's going to make our lives easier because we're not going to have to hear it. Okay, and it's also going to make it easier for them to operate under their own budgets under a level funded situation. Okay, so that's the that's my real comment is let's challenge our department heads to really take a deep look and determine if the money is where it needs to be and if we can move it around or you know what else we can do. The reason I brought up emergency management is that it's come up in past years and it wasn't water. Yeah, he was anticipating some additional training, and he was buying cases of paper. Mm -hmm. I mean, which if we had them in, in stock, he wouldn't have to go out and, and end up buying mm -hmm. as much as he did. But that's what he was anticipating, and I guess, he had at a that time. That, you know, that people could, like at Simplex when I worked there, we had a mail room, mm -hmm. literally, and when you needed supplies, you went there, mm -hmm. and you got a, you have a receipt, and they give you what you needed, mm -hmm. and they that way they could have an inventory, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I just have a, a question. Uh, did, uh, we, we brought up about the uh, uh, Gilman Wake, the, the $10,000. Uh, was that something that that uh, you, you brought up to, to Bob about fixing the fence and some of the issues he had with the, the bleachers? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a type of money that it's there. It was done in 19, long before this this irrigation mm -hmm. alone came up and that's- I want to say you mentioned that he had gone in and it, it made repairs to some of the fence already, hadn't he? Well, he's about to. He's about he to. just put the, uh, the uh, tape up for now in okay. the areas that were believed to be- Yeah, there's so many kids risk. and there's, it sounds like there's not a lot of supervision sometimes. Yeah. So they should really get on that because we don't want anybody to get hurt. Yeah. There's a there, lot there, was, of there was a lot of ready. stuff on Facebook about Kids climbing on roofs. Yep. About what? Kids climbing on roofs. And being bullying, basically. And I also have an issue. I received a call today from Mr. Sozik that will be pulling out the four bodies because of vandalism stuff. Oh. That's too bad. I, I, didn't, I didn't understand that. Yeah. The, the port, port body, bodies. Oh, the, the port bodies. He's going to be pulling those out. There's only mm -hmm. one over there. Yeah, that one. They're going to be pulling it due to vandalism. Oh, that's too really? bad. Yeah. That really is. That kind of highlights the need to yeah, go in and get that those. Well. That's take those the, the need to think it end up having those facilities when people are over there <laughs> and getting the toilets completed with this ten thousand dollars. I mean, that's a better, better way to address it. If we have, we have functions over there. We have the facilities. The septic system is already there. We already we spent a, bu mm -hmm. a bunch of money for that already in the past. Um. I have one question, yes. and you may not be able to answer this right away, but I'm going to ask 2020 DPW Main Street Bridge, Correct. page five, $200,000. I believe this is the one over by the um, the Otter River Hotel, am I correct? Yeah. It's currently, the, yeah. yeah um, where does that stand? And if you don't know the answer to it right now, that's fine. Yeah. Come back with it, but. It is for engineering services. Mr. Sozik will be working on that. Uh, once we move forward to, because a lot of our bridges are in 
is probably one of the most challenging things yeah. with our infrastructure. Yeah. Um, Mass the state Massachusetts Department of Transportation will inspect our bridges, and we need to comply with it. So we need to get the engineering done. See if we could get a it. grant. I wonder if we could because she was that's going to hurt. Massachusetts vulnerabilities program, which we are applying for, we're going for action grants. Yeah. Of the criteria that's really bridges. that would really put in our budget mm -hmm. big time. Do we have an idea of what that's going to cost to end up? Because I'm sure it's probably going to end up being a replacement. I know what the I know what the condition of the bridge looks like. Do we have an idea of what that number is to replace it, or are we just well? That's why with the engineering, that's the engineering. We'll okay. Figure out closer okay. what, what we're going to have to be able to yeah. provide. Yeah, all the stuff for it because it's not part of. Any yeah, it's not a numbered route or anything like that. Yeah, the town has to do it, unfortunately. You can't push it up on them. <laughs> yeah, we can't call the state on that one. There's a lot we can, but we can't call the state on that one. We're hung for that one. They'll inspect our bridges. So. Okay. So, so, so part of that engineering will be an idea of what we're going to have to, what the town's going to have to spend to replace that bridge. That is correct. Because, because I'm just from the looking at it, I can tell it's structurally deficient. It's going to have to be done. So. I don't need an engineer to see that on my own eyes. It'll be nice to get the report, but I, I, don't, I know I can look at it and say, but yeah. You can also figure out the most cost effective right. way to. Exactly. What's yeah. what's going to be the best way to do it? Yeah. You talked about the, the app funds. Uh, we have to take sub, uh, submit for those. I mean, the, from all the documents I saw, we, we could end up getting equipment for the highway, for the fire department, and any other needs. In, in fact, it might even meet some of our infrastructure issues with that money. And that's $2.4 million not to sneeze at. And we have, unfortunately, yeah, we have a lot of needs. Yeah. Correct. And that's and why I, I think this is the opportunity to take and help meet some of those mm -hmm. needs for those departments. Can you imagine what a huge help that would be if we could, but you have to apply for them. Yep. You're not going to just walk yeah, down I mean, in your lap. Those can, some of those needs can come off the capital plan, which, yeah. We can now shift to something else, right? Well, and that's why we we've applied the funds. It looks like two disbursements of one, roughly one point two million dollars coming to Templeton. Mm -hmm. uh, once we get more guidance on what uses it could be used for, I think that's worthy of a discussion between the select board and the advisory committee. Yeah. Um, but our application is in for those funds. One time, one time money. So you better make it yeah. good while you get the chance. I think it's a great opportunity. I mean, in one-time funds for one-time purposes. If we if we don't apply, we won't get the money. That's right. If we apply and they turn it down because it's not appropriate, okay, so be it. But at least we applied and try to get some of that money. And I think we'll have a healthy discussion. Yeah, yeah I I hope so. Any other questions, comments, concerns with the BVA from uh, yes, May? Just one other one. Go ahead. Is this in 2020 buildings and grounds asked for a camera? Is there really a need to have a camera for the the, the uh, town hall? Yeah, that's what it was. That's what it originally was for. The 2020 town hall cameras. Yeah. What we're looking at right now is I and I I debated whether or not to close that. I decided not to because. The select board will be having something in front of them. I'm sure you've seen the Board of Health talk about those textile recycling and having those outside of town hall. Possibly the use of having potentially a camera out there could be helpful. Um, yeah. As we hear, you know, it's just a vandalism that get on the way. You're saying they're going to have containers out there for. Well, this, it's going to go in front of the select board for their next meeting. Yeah. And let's say they choose to, to do that. I think if there's any issues of people just dumping stuff out there, I think those cameras could be helpful or. Let's say even putting cameras on to our um, trash area, make sure people just don't dump in there. Mm -hmm. We haven't had any issues, but I I was I didn't really want to close that because in case there if there is an issue, at least we have the money available to put. Did I understand cameras. them correctly that they were going to pick it up recycling uh, textile goods? Textile. Yeah. Oh wow, that's a because a lot of those. <laughs> And textiles are ending up going into the landfill mm. today. People are throwing away stuff. I mean, older clothes, etc. Well, stuff gets recycled. That doesn't get recycled it's, either. It's, they can be reused for something else. Yeah. Well, and then Port of Health okay. just recently voted on it, but then the uh, select board will have the, the say at the, for the town hall. Ms. Griffiths. Yes, Mr. Chair, I, I would 
uh, concur with that and that cameras would be valuable if where I volunteer. We have we can have cameras everywhere. You, you cannot believe what people try to get away with. That unfortunately is true. Yeah. Yeah, and and, and and in all honesty, just for the safety of people coming in and out of town hall, especially in the winter, oh, it it, it, what, when it gets dark at four thirty in the afternoon, I mean, it, it, it'd be good to have it'd be good to have those cameras out there just as a without a fire hydrant and throw oh. away with it. What? Yeah, what's on the camera? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh, you never Lord. know what you're okay. gonna find. Yeah, yeah, that's that's some. Well, <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> Anyone else with any comments, concerns, questions regarding the BVA for May? Mm -hmm. no. All right. I have a motion and a second to accept it into the record as read and reviewed. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, and the motion carries at 8.15 p.m. All set. You're all set. Thank you. You're off the hook. That was a that was a light week for you. <laughs> thank you for the work. There's not you, seven motions. That's yeah, good. Thank you for the work you did up in the call, and I appreciate yeah. it. Yes, and I'm hoping that Bob's crew do a great job out there, and it'll yeah. be a nice area to drive by down. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, people see some of the stuff. It's not so bad if it's like within the year, but if it's a couple of years, there's something wrong with our process. Well, Sometimes people don't realize you don't realize the money sitting there either. How many people looked at, at the budget versus actual? Yeah. Really? So there's work to do up there. And then mm -hmm. unless you go and look and say, aha, it's four thousand dollars sitting here. Right. You know, it doesn't get spent. It gets there's so much going on in your life that you don't know, don't pay attention. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Yep. But that's a good, good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, members' comments. Ms. Bartolomeo, you're up first. Well, I think we're off to a good start. I think that we get a lot accomplished. I'm looking forward to having new people on the board. I'm telling you, it's a, it's a really rewarding job because you get to you get to learn a lot. You get to deal with good people, and I think that. You don't have to know a lot. You learn as you go along. You have help. You have people that will help you learn. And that's an important thing. Your community is only as good as you make it. And, you know, the younger people, you know, I can understand they've got kids. They've got so much on their hands. You're a little older. You get a little more free time. A couple, couple you know, a few hours a week. It, it makes a big difference. It really does. And it is a job. There's no getting around it. But your community is better for it. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Bev. April. Um, didn't you want to discuss the third? I'll get to that. Oh, okay. okay. I'll get to that in a second. All right. Um, no, I don't have any. No comment? No. Will. <laughs> Yes, I have some concerns. Uh, I, I watched the selection committee and I saw that there was a conflict between a couple of the, 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 the uh, bylaws. I was make that. My, my concern is more with the advisory. You better speak up well because I can't hear you. Okay, make sure and you mine, speak up in the microphone. Yeah. Mine is more concerned with the, with the advisory the bylaw. The change that there was a change that was not made. It was it was submitted. It said the eighth of April. It was changed when it came into this office to the tenth. Number one. Number two. There was some some things about dates of reports uh, from the, this this committee is to town meeting. And I pushed back on that, and I told the, the members at that time, uh, and I and I, I I I did relent because they they made concessions for other stuff that I wanted, and this this is basically how town government works, basically, give and take, yeah. But they're all gone now. They they were more 
astute and they, they saw a, an opportunity that they would have seven members and then quite a few members that were now had a number of years. And to think it ended up being a, a report to annual town meeting was probably more fe feasible. We really have not done a good job of that. And then I look, especially when I end up coming into the meeting and I see resignations by two members. Mm -hmm. There's four members here. My concern is this, of two new members, and, I, and that's not the spur on you. And you have two older members who, I'll admit it, I have health issues, and I know Bev says she has health issues. If one of us don't make it to a meeting and we don't get anybody else, we can't do business. We can't do business. Yeah. We're not going to make that five days or the four days. Yeah. Not with the, the fact that we only have 30 days in it. I would like to see the advisory committee by law change and move to the, the, the two days. Now, I made the statement and I stand by it too, the two days. And we work to take it up being before the two days. And I would push for that. But to take it end up saying that with less people here, and I want us to take it end up doing the right thing as far as the reports, because we've been criticizing, criticized, and just by the way, justly so. I don't want to take it end up saying we have not been criticized uh, incorrectly for the type of report that we give the town meeting. I'd like to see us start to take it end up doing something more like other communities. But the less people you have, the less chance you have of that. And especially if you have members that may not be able to take it, end up being here for the quorum. And I and I see town government, and it concerns me all the way around that we're not getting people to come in to any of the, the boards and committees. There's been resignations here, there. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have had needs. Some of them had been filled, which is good, mm -hmm. which is good. But there's still too many of them that are unfilled. And, uh, they've been unfilled for a long time. And I just, it's hot, it's hotter, it's hot enough to take it end up asking a, a moderator to take it end up appointing somebody and, and getting somebody unless, unless he has somebody appoint. I mean, what the past practice was, and I, I stated this in the past, the past pack practice was that within 30 days, it was up to him. After the 30 days, it was up to, to the advisory. Yeah. We kind of changed that a little bit. Again, I re re reiterated because I had seen how this, this committee worked in the past. What do I mean by that? It, I mean that when we had openings, because we can fill them, I vote, Members of this this body went out and found people. I mean, you can ask our chairman. How did how did you get how did you get on this committee? Mr. Spring, Ms. Bartholomew, approached me in town meeting, and my better half attacked him, and I and I don't mean physically attacked him to be on before I got there. I just couldn't. I, I had to wait till the end of the meeting, and he was sitting next to her. That's how we have filled a number of our positions over the years. Yeah. Bev has gotten people. I have gotten people. How how do we have how how has this committee uh, fielded people? When you end up seeing an individual that's concerned about his community come up and talk at an annual town meeting, or in one particular case, I won't mention the gentleman saying he doesn't live in town anyway, come up to, to me when I was chairman and said, I'd like to be on the committee. And I says, put your paperwork in. He was a very good, he was a very good member. I mean, he just, he, he, unfortunately he moved out, out of the community and, and I don't think the, the community that he went into uh, has appreciated him uh, per se because he has not been on the advisory committee in that, that community. But I mean, we have gotten a lot of people. And I, I went out and on a, a number of people, I got on because I saw individuals mm -hmm. that either on Facebook or sent the, were saying things and I approached them. Mm -hmm. 
some of them that I'd like to try, I try, I've tried to get back on, they will not come back, back on because of things that have happened in the past when they were on. They have bad feelings about how they were handled and done stuff by the past administrations. I said, well, you still have your opportunity to take a minute. It won't happen. It won't happen, unfortunately. And, they, and in fact, Adam was after me about the same individual that I had already approached three times. He said, he's a good one. And I said, I know. <laughs> he's the one that's made presentations. I can tell you the presentations he's made. So, I mean, I, I want to be careful about how we end up putting the time frame on with a few people here and giving us some leeway. I think it's better served that we end up still having the two days and not the four and five days because that's going to put a strain on us. And if we don't get if we don't get the warrants in time uh, as timely as it should be. <clears throat> And because of everything going on, if one member doesn't show, we're not going to be able to address some things there mm -hmm. and have a pre count in time and get that report done. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest. But I think I think we need to be careful when we make <coughs> changes in our bylaws because there are so many repercussions oh, absolutely. that people don't realize when the change is made, <coughs> it affects something else. It's kind of like what the Fisher cats in Quabbin to kill the porcupines. Well, that was a charming job idea until they didn't stay in Guam, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, there's a cause and effect to everything mm -hmm. and you really need to know what and you're I, doing. And I had told with the past members that that was not a good idea to have it. And, and the thing I said, you already have two days and if we can end up doing better than that, that's a plus, mm -hmm. but at least that's the drop dead day. There may come a circumstance that we can't make it, but you know, in five days, but we could probably, we have to make it too. And, and going into my comments, did you have anything else? No, okay. okay. Um, so oh, I knew this was just one. Okay. If we can end up putting this on the agenda for the next meeting and have a, a more in-depth discussion about article, our um, article or which one article, uh, which uh, article two? Uh, no, our, our article is uh, Article Nine, which is uh, it was Chapter. Oh, nine. Article uh, Chapter Nine, Article uh, One. Okay. Uh, article, oh, article Eleven. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's under the new laws. Yep. We can we can discuss that next meeting. Um, I, I'm not opposed to picking it up, but I mean that. I, yeah. Put off your nose to spite your face. Yeah. And the uh, problem here is is that I. I knew Mr. Bennett was. I knew that it was on the agenda for the for the town or for the uh, board of selectmen. I read the law. I read our. I read. Um, uh, I read section twenty two dash six of the town bylaws review of warrant articles by the advisory committee. They are conflicting. Yeah. And and in this case, you're absolutely right. It's it, it it's a strain, but we have to go by the law. Right. And the law states for an annual town meeting, that report has to be in five days. For a special town meeting, that report has to be in within four course. days. So, so in that case, because our timelines are going to be challenged, yep, absolutely. I need to challenge the select board to have that warrant to us in a timely fashion so we can post our Meeting. Our to, our meeting to pre town meeting yeah our pre town meeting to have so the, which we're going to review those bylaws yep. and so that we can have the report published in time yep. to meet the in this case because we're going to have a special we're going to have the, the special town meeting that's uh, going to have Mr Lamontagne said to me hopefully seven articles sure. maybe sure. give or take estimated seven um, but we're going to need so we're going to need that warrant in a timely fashion. Nope. And we're going to need enough time to be able to post our our special meeting, our, our uh, pre-town meeting, nope. to, at which to review it, and enough, in enough time to get that report prepared nope. and back to the town to be able to hit the four-day mark. Right. This, so, this idea, just given the votes, to me is, yep. and I, I stated this yep. a couple of times in the meetings and said, 
we should be putting verbiage. Mm -hmm. And what I was told, and I'm, I was, and Mr. Bennett and I both can understand this, we bring up stuff and sometimes we're the only ones and the rest of the, the rest of the boards or committee, uh, the majority is going to end up getting what they want. <laughs> well, so, and I mean, and, and, and I, and I, 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 I basically told them. <coughs> if you're not, not here good. long enough, you don't understand the repercussions. Yep. yep. And even the town administrator, if he doesn't, hasn't been, not talking about you, but in general, if he hasn't been in a town long enough, he, you can make a change like getting, changing the dump bylaw that got rid of our, our hazardous waste from coming into town or right so that you've got to be careful what you change because it can come back and bite you i mean i had a conversation with the administrator today about two bylaws that were taken out of the books and his first words is what do you mean they're gone and i said Magic. yes your predecessor ended up getting rid of them and one of them uh, there's a a uh, a CMA, I think that's CMA 152, that re re in regards to a particular thing that should be enforced by the, the Board of Health. And it, it, it isn't, it's just uh, whatever. Yeah. And that's unfortunate. I mean, we have to, one thing I want to take and end up making clear if we make a, a bylaw change, and I want to make sure that the, the folks here, the TA and the, the, the two of Board of Selectmen, if we make a, a bylaw change and submit it to the attorney general, <clears throat> do not expect them to come look at all your bylaws and see if there's a conflict. Yeah. And we, ran in, we ran into this and I, I presented that at the Association of Town Finance. I asked, I asked the, the lawyers there and I said, do you look at that? And she said, no. You have to take your selectmen have to take an end up bringing that to us about the particular issue I was talking about, and I mean, I brought it up and it just it didn't the happen. The codification that we pay for mm -hmm. has got so much to be desired. I yeah. they only look at the, the bylaw to make sure it's okay as a bylaw, it not that it's in, in in conflict with another bylaw that you have. Yeah. They're not going to take and chase down all your bylaws. So a couple other comments that I wanted to make um, and going to town meeting in this case as well. In the same section 22.6, it says said committee, after, which said committee is the advisory committee, after due consideration of the subject matter of such articles report thereon to, a, to, to the town meeting in writing, such recommendations as it deems best for the interest of the town and its citizens. And when I, when I read that, and I think back to what annual town meeting was, and I am guilty of this because I asked a lot of the questions. Um, I think that means that it's not just a record of how we voted. I feel that there should be a listing of, if it's a unanimous vote, give the majority opinion. If and the minority split, opinion. If, well, well, if it's a unanimous vote, there's only a majority of the question. No, but but saying if, if it's a split vote, yeah. Give them a give a Why? give the opinion for and give the opinion against. Okay. And I would and I would and I would like to I would like to take a look at this body and say, let's see if we can do that for this next special meeting and have that in the report that we give to the town that the voters will take a look at when they go into that meeting. Because I and I'm and trust me, I understand I'm the guilty party here, or I'm one of the guilty parties here, but I asked. When I when I was not on this board yeah. at our previous annual town meeting, I was one of the parties who was standing up asking the advisory committee why they voted as they did. And some of you respectfully declined to make comment, which I absolutely 100% agree with. And some of you did make comment, which mm -hmm. I absolutely and which I was absolutely thankful that you did. But I would like to, I think that it will help town meeting flow better. And I also think that the people who are there to help do the business of the town will be better informed yeah. people walking into to, that meeting yeah. than people they will need, be. They need to be yeah. able to understand what's going on. 
and I think they need to trust that what they're voting for mm -hmm. is it is what it is. Yeah. No gray areas, mm -hmm. no playing games. This is what it is. This is why we want it. And we're asking you for your money. Mm -hmm. and in past years, that's, and, and I tried that's to get this last the whole advisory thing. committee to do this, and they, they said, well, we'll make those those recommendations on the form, nothing happened. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, like I said, I'm only one number. But I mean, for a number of years prior to that, along with the vote, there was as much as a paragraph or more is describing why the vote in that particular thing, whether it was positive or negative, was made by this committee. The trouble with and that's what people have to understand. The trouble with having it written down, it's really hard to read under those lights sometimes. Some people have trouble reading. So you're better off to speak to people so they understand. Because when you if you get a book this thick, when you walk in the door, not everyone has the, the luxury of sitting down and watching all these meetings. Mm -hmm. So I think that people should feel comfortable coming in and asking questions. I know Jeffrey's always good about giving all the information he can gather to do a whole lot more work than 99% of the selectmen in the state, I think. Um, is there a way that those books can be accessible? Huh? Is there a way that those books can be accessible to people prior to the meeting? Yeah, they, sometimes they, they get there too late and it's just crazy. Because it's you can't. There's no way on this earth you can stop it. Yeah, it yeah. seems like they should be. We should be able to put them out like that in the post office in town. The town, the, the town articles, the books. Can we distribute those throughout the town prior to the meeting so that people have the luxury of taking a couple of days to read those articles Some, prior to the meeting? Put it on their website. I'm sorry. Those, those the post office. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, there's a lot of people don't. They I don't think they like computer. those books to hold. You know what I mean? Well, they found the write their questions and stuff. Well, they can make them available here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, Anybody can call me. I'll bring one over. Um, one other comment um, with regards to the resignations that we had this evening and the filling of those vacancies. Yeah. Um, so the way the bylaw reads, if a member resigns for any reason, or if any member is absent for five consecutive meetings of the advisory committee, except in case of illness, the position shall be deemed to be vacant and filled as herein provided. The advisory committee chairman shall notify the moderator, which I will do tonight, um, to determine if there are any interested town registered voters to fill the vacancy. The moderator shall be given 30 days to fill the vacant position by appointing a person to complete the unexpired term. So for the one position, the, uh, once I notify the moderator, he'll have 30 days from that point. No, 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 no. Uh, 30 days after town meeting. No, 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 this is for vacancies. It's, vacancies. It is in there for vacancies. So once I notify the town moderator for the one position, he'll have 30 days from my notification to appoint if there's any interested personnel. And then we are allowed to vote. And then we are allowed to uh, do it ourselves. And well, the same thing can, with the you second. Can that around too, because we there is one position that is still vacant and he has not filled it. That one, that one That's position, one we can that vote. We can end up. That one, if we, so if we, so if we find somebody that wants to be on, yeah. we can fill the one position now yeah. with a vote. Yes. That's okay. Good. The other two, one of them will be moderator will have thirty days upon my communication, which will probably be tomorrow morning. Yep. And then the second one, which his turn, which his his uh, what is it? His resignation is uh, effective uh, July fifteenth. Yep. Then August. the next day will be thirty days from that point, and then we'll be able to vote. Um, so, um, one other note that the term of office of any person chosen by the advisory committee, so if we vote on it, yeah. okay, to, to fill a vacancy shall expire at the final adjournment right. of the next succeeding annual town meeting therein May 2022. Yeah. Um, the moderator at that time shall appoint a successor to compete for the complete well, they, can, they, can, they can ask to be that person can put in their paperwork to be reappointed. We're, we're lucky in the fact that the, the, the moderators. Has it's not some scary. Input, has, has a direct link uh, through a, an individual here that we're talking about. <laughs> so, yeah. anybody we know? <laughs> no, nobody no. I know. All right. <laughs> um, 
other than that, thank you. Uh, this was a good meeting. I, we got some good work done tonight. Yeah. Um, we will discuss, we can discuss uh, article, we can discuss our article yeah. next uh, in yeah. two weeks. Um, the one thing I would like to do before we uh, adjourn tonight though, is I would like to, uh, to quickly uh, decide, we have, a fifth we have a fifth Thursday in July. And by our own bylaw, we have to make a we have to make a decision on whether we're going to have that fifth that third meeting. As as, as I said previous previously, it's the call of the chair, and you can get a consensus. Well, you can get a consensus tonight, yeah. but we can't vote. Yeah. So um, my thought process is that uh, we're not going to hold it. I believe our bylaw does say we have to vote on it. Um, that doesn't have to be tonight. It'll, it'll be on the next meeting. Um, well, but something comes up that's important, right. then we can always yeah. do that. And having said that, it, in, I would hope that if anything was that, if anything important came up for that meeting, it would be able to wait one week yeah. because yeah. you'd be meeting yeah. again the following week. Um, my thought process will be to cancel the 29th yeah. and to vote uh, to vote and to vote to cancel the 29th. Yeah. Um, I'm getting nodding heads, so as long as anything doesn't major doesn't come up we're going to cancel that meeting okay, um we'll vote on that in two weeks okay. um other than that i have nothing else um that would be on my comments yes um other than that i have another comment so that to thank mr bennett Ms. griffiths uh mr graves mr lamontane for being with us this evening and at this time i will i will entertain a motion to adjourn so move i have a motion from mr spring second i have a second from Ms. bartolomeo to adjourn is there any discussion on said motion Hearing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 